Hey there, everybody. It is just about five o'clock. This is Lisa, the survival mom, and we are going live. I'm kind of excited about this because I am going to be talking about a topic that was quite a mystery to me not that long ago, and that is all about freeze dried food. And if you will just give me a moment, I want to share this with um, two other groups. My group for women called We Are Survival Moms. Let me just see if I can uh, get that going in there. Not sure I am going to be able to, but I'm going to try anyway. And I see a couple of you here. Hey, yes, Melanie. I finally noticed that I was putting my hair up in clips every single day and I started to think, let's just do something different. Let's just get rid of all this down here and let's just uh, go with something shorter. So thanks for noticing. And um, let me see. Thanks, Meredith, too. Um, freeze dried food. Yeah, it is a mystery. And a lot of people, when they first, if they're really, really new to freeze dried food, they might think that it's like they may, may have heard it. Um, you know, back in the era of astronauts, and they've heard of astronauts eating freeze-dried food up in space. You know, that's a possibility. Um, and others think that it's only for survivalists and people who stock up on freeze-dried food, you know, they have just got to be nuts. And so I am hoping that uh, in today's lesson and in the printable tutorial, more I don't know if it's a tutorial as much as it is a... Um, kind of a primer is what I'm calling it. I'll be offering that to you a little bit later. So let me just um, click a couple of things here. And let's see if I can do this. Just give me one second. And if you are in these groups, we are Survival Moms or Survival Mom Boot Camp. If you aren't seeing the video, and it looks like I'm not going to be able to share it there, unfortunately, I hope you can scurry over to the Survival Mom page. Um, and just join us now. So thanks for everybody who's joining us. We have 21 people already. And thanks, Liz. Thank you. Um, I hope that it looks, you know how it is when you first get something done to your hair and style that looks just perfect. We will see if that uh, if that's the case <laughs> in a few, a few days, a few weeks, but I'm going to do my best. Um, let's see. Robert is making supper while he watches. All righty. Well, so if freeze dried food isn't just for astronauts, if it's not just for survivalists, then I guess the rest of us can feel okay about buying it and stocking up without being, you know, put it, feel like we're in a pigeonhole with, you know, some wacky survivalists somewhere who, you know, just uh, live underground <laughs> with their gas masks and their, uh, you know, their nuclear war suits or whatever. So freeze dried food is actually something that you really, easily could be in every kitchen's food storage pantry. Not even a food storage pantry, but just your regular kitchen pantry. And I have some examples I'm going to show you. I have links in the printables for four companies that I highly recommend. So instead of just kind of one wandering around and clicking on, you know, this company or that company, I don't know what to buy, Lisa. Um, four companies that I have purchased from in the past, I've used their food in the past. One of them, overwhelmingly, I have used more than any other. I'll share all that with you in the primer that you're going to get uh, in the printable for you today. Freeze dried food in my family, it's been interesting because my daughter reminded me of a, a few days ago of a time when she had friends over, no snacks to be had. And I have never really been big on having just grab and go snacks, you know, cookies and chips. If you have kids, you know how fast those disappear. And so on rare occasions, I would buy the cookies or whatever, but usually not. And so she had friends over and apparently she wanted to entertain them in high style. And so she went into our, uh, our food storage pantry and she pulled out freeze dried ice cream bars. And freeze dried ice cream bars are pretty cool. You know, they look exactly like the classic um, ice cream bar, you know, the two chocolate long rectangular chocolate cookies with a vanilla ice cream inside. It looks exactly like that. If you buy those, you know, from a freeze dried company. And so she was serving her little friends freeze dried ice cream and who knows what they thought, but at least they got a, a chance to taste freeze dried food for themselves and realize, you know, hey, you know, mom, we had something kind of weird over at the Bedford household. You know, why don't you look into that? And so uh, that is just one story in our experience of freeze dried food. 
when you start looking at freeze dried food and let's let's call it also call it emergency a lot of times on websites you'll see emergency food supply you know you need this for an emergency well it isn't freeze dried is not the same as dehydrated have you ever had a piece of food sitting out on the kitchen counter let's say fruit an apple and you can tell me in the comments if you're watching this on Facebook or if you see this later on YouTube um, a piece of fruit and it just dries up and what happens when it dries up it shrivels doesn't it and you have this little you know odd looking uh, shriveled up apple for example or a peach that just kind of gets smaller and smaller and smaller because the water is, de uh, is dehydrating from it well that's dehydrated food when you have dehydrated food and I have nothing against that I have been dehydrating food for 10 years off and on it removes the water but it also changes the size of the food the color of the food um, it just doesn't really look like an apple anymore let's just face it however I want to show, to show you this look at these green beans if you are watching or listening to this on a podcast just imagine um, green beans <laughs> these are freeze-dried green beans and you can see that they look like real green beans they have been cleaned they have been chopped and then they were magically freeze-dried so freeze-dried food it will always have it's a, pretty much its original color its original shape and its original size so if you're weighing back and forth between dehydrated and freeze-dried I think that freeze-dried is a little quicker and a lot and not all cases but in a lot of cases it's quicker to prepare with water to rehydrate because um, uh, it's just like the outside skin of it is just softer it's hard you know when I when I've used freeze-dried corn in the past sometimes the freeze-dried corn never really really gets back to a corn consistency it always re retains some chewiness and maybe some of you have tried that before um, I've used dehydrated dehydrated corn in soups and in different kinds of recipes it's okay and I would certainly recommend stocking up on it but freeze-dried it just rehydrates more quickly so what happens in the freeze-dried process well it's a pretty it's pretty complex actually because when the food is picked and what I love is that a company like Thrive Life for example um, legacy foods whatever company you buy for you're researching on the internet they can pick the food when it is perfectly ripe and then the food contains water moisture you know whatever you know whatever it might be including meat including cheese <clears throat> and uh, they freeze it into a solid and this is a pretty quick process they freeze it into the solid the ice the the liquid the water that is part of the food it turns into ice and then they add a small amount of heat enough heat for that ice to be almost instantly transformed into water vapor and that leaves the food in its original size and color and shape so dehydrating you can do that easily at home I mean you can dehydrate foods on a very very low setting for example in your oven freeze drying is a little bit uh, you really need a freeze drying machine I'm going to answer a quick question really fast for you because I was asked this um, in just a comments I think on uh, maybe the survival Mom page what about the home dehydration freeze dry hydrate freeze freeze de freeze dried machines okay some people I know absolutely love those and here is what I would recommend evaluate how inexpensively you can acquire a good amount of food because at some point you're going to think wow you know this machine has paid for itself with all the money we've saved or you might say that machine you know we're nowhere near it even breaking even so if you grow a lot of food let's say or you are able to get uh, a good amount of food at a low cost where it really is going to um, maybe beat the price of something like this there are a lot of green beans in here I've used about two-thirds of them but there are a lot of green beans in here and you have to think how many green bean plants would I have to plant and water and nurture gardening is a whole lot harder than you know than people think at first in order to fill just one can and so find out the cost of one of these cans or a number 10 can this is a number 10 size can it holds about a gallon of food the food will settle so it's not always filled it's not going to be filled at the very top but just evaluate you know can you acquire enough food where you can freeze dry it and over a period of time you can break even and maybe even do better by owning a freeze drying machine
All right, so that's my advice for that. And you can read re different reviews online. Some people say they're very, very large. Some people say they're loud. Um, and I know they have been making improvements in their models over the years. So that's, uh, that is probably the best advice I can give you. Um, let's see. Um, let's see, Becca, is that, uh, is that link not working? If it's not, it will be working. Just give me a little bit of time when we're finished here. So uh, the freeze drying process is complex and most people end up buying freeze dried foods from a food storage company like Thrive Life, like Augustine Farms, Legacy Foods, Honeyville. Those are uh, four pretty big sized companies. Here are the advantages. Freeze dried food is very lightweight. The moisture has been completely removed. So you have the food, but it's just very, very small, like this cranberry, okay? It's very, very lightweight. Um, the food isn't going to spoil. I know a lot of people who buy freeze-dried food and they just use it in their everyday cooking. It is not uncommon at all for me and my house to go use freeze-dried chopped onions, freeze-dried green onions, the kinds of things that I use frequently, but how many times have I thrown away green onions because they spoiled in the refrigerator before I could use them? So the uh, freeze-dried food isn't going to spoil, although I will say now that I live in a very humid area, it is very susceptible to humidity. So if you live in a place where it's humid uh, all year long or certain times of the year and you open a container of freeze dried food, you can very easily reseal it. Even just even if all you can do is put it in a canning jar, a canning jar just has a much tighter seal than, a you know, a jelly jar, or the typical kinds of, you know, you know, jars that we use, you know, and we kind of recycle and we use over and over for different purposes. A canning jar is going to give you a tighter seal. OK, so if you live somewhere humid, you may want to. Uh, just put the freeze-dried food in a canning jar and then seal it up and use it as needed. Um, you can buy freeze-dried meals, completely freeze-dried. They're very lightweight. You add hot water. Sometimes you can add hot water directly to the pouch. Other times the instructions will say to use a saucepan. They rehydrate quickly, you know, maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and you have a complete meal. Uh, before buying those, I would definitely recommend, highly recommend, that you buy one pouch and give it a try. So uh, these are great for camping. They are great for evacuations. So if you were thinking, I'm putting together an evacuation kit, Lisa, and I need some food. Well, the canned food is one option. It's definitely shelf stable, but it's the freeze dried food that is going to be super lightweight. And you may be really glad that you have freeze dried food. Just make sure that you have water and then you have a way to heat up the water because without those two things, you're going to run into problems. You're not going to want to eat uh, freeze-dried lasagna, just dry out of the pouch. <laughs> I can promise you that. Um, so super speedy prep. You saw that these green beans, they've already been cleaned. They've already been chopped, sliced, whatever. Huge time saver. Uh, a few days ago, I opened up a can of, I've had this for years in the food storage pantry, potato flakes from Rainy Day Foods. Now, Rainy Day Foods is an old company. They have been around for many, many, many years. I think they're up in Idaho. And I bought this, I think, when I first started food storage. And when I looked at the lid, the lid has a date stamp. Uh, where's my? The date was 2009. So these potato flakes are 10 years old. Why did I buy them, in the, or why did I use them in the first place? I was mixing up a uh, a mixture, a food mixture for the Kongs that we give our dogs. So I was mixing up uh, basically instant potato, instant mashed potatoes. I actually added freeze dried green beans. I added some freeze dried ground beef, just like a handful, maybe a third of a cup. Mixed it all together with hot water, and then I shoved it into the Kongs, and they were very happy for a while. <laughs> our big foster dog tends to take over whatever we give our little dog, and so there's some back and forth there. But I want to show you. The, uh, the potato flakes, they are 10 years old, maybe even a little bit older because I don't know exactly, you know, when exactly precisely they were packaged. So here they are. Whoa. If you're watching this or if you're listening to this as a podcast, let me just assure you, these potato flakes are white. They are fresh looking and they have spilled on my tabletop <laughs> as I was trying to demonstrate. So, I mean, they sure don't look like they're 10 years old, do they? So freeze-dried foods, and in this case, these potato flakes, they are really a good addition long-term for your food storage pantry. Okay, so rainy day foods. I didn't include a link to them just because I'm not as familiar with them. Um, I bought some food, I think, one time from them 10 years ago. So the companies I use, I use most frequently, Thrive Life, 
I'm an affiliate with them and I'll have the link for you. You can just check the foods out. Um, let's see. Rochelle says, I do the same. So we have quite a few people here who are familiar with freeze-dried food. So to kind of wrap this up, um, I have a freebie for you. TheSurvivalMom.com forward slash freeze-dried food. And if that form isn't working uh, right, you know, right as I am recording this, then I will check into it and I'll make sure it's recording. But TheSurvivalMom.com forward slash freeze-dried food and you will receive a freeze-dried primer. It will have links to companies. It will have my best advice for saving money, for trying it out, and deciding what freeze-dried foods you should stock up on first. Our family, my husband and I, we decided we wanted to stock up on um, meat because we figured we can grow fruits and vegetables, um, but when it comes to protein, we had little kids at the time, 10 years ago. Uh, they were nine and seven or nine and six, something like that, and we wanted to make sure we had a great source of protein. So that's, that was our choice, but you may decide to go for something different. So in this um, freeze-dried primer that you will get via email from me, um, you'll see my best advice and links that I think will be helpful to you. So uh, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, these Facebook Lives, they're going to be here as uh, recorded replays for you, along with the links that I have mentioned uh, in our conversation today. We are going to give me a few days uh, anywhere from between four and seven days, and these will be on YouTube. And if you look up Survival Mom on iTunes or podcast, I think you can even go maybe to Survival Mom Radio. That's an old website of mine, but you still might be able to get the link there, and you can listen to these as podcasts. And remember, if you're a member of Survival Mom Sisterhood, SurvivalMomSisterhood.com, these will all be archived. The replays will be there for you, along with links to all the printables, and you won't have to uh, go searching for them. So tomorrow, I have a really fun topic. Ready? Prepper fiction, pros and cons. I have some pretty strong opinions about that, and I hope you will be here. I'll be here about the same time, 5, 6 o'clock or so, and uh, I will see you then. And by the way, if you have any questions, uh, Meredith says Thrive Life is amazing. Okay, if you have any questions, I will be checking back here, and I'll be answering them tomorrow, 5-ish or so. I'll be here right here on Facebook Live. See you then.